The reason why people are so ignorant to world issues today, the, people, the reason why people don't know about them is because we're not talking about it. You think to eliminate racism, we shouldn't talk about it? No, that's gonna make people ignorant. You know, and when you're in a space that constantly silences your emotions, then, I mean, you just get so accustomed to never sharing them. Um, if you don't have patience, find a new job. Because you need patience. You need to be able to talk to the kids that are wild and out. But if you remember your why, you bring who you are to the table, you're going to impact students regardless. Do it for real Fridays where you'll hear the brilliant wisdom and insights of young people who know what's good. Okay, so welcome fam. So good to see y'all. Um, what a journey life is, huh? Uh, grateful for your, your participation, your contributions uh, to the spaces that allow for young people to see their value and to see their possibilities, right? I've you know, been able to see y'all, so whether it's doing a one-two step or <laughs> doing the Beyonce thing or, or, or freestyling, um, being able to be in, you know, sometimes in earshot or to actually see you guys in action is a real gift, right? As are you guys, right? So just want you to always remember how much a gift you are to the spaces that you bless, mm -hmm. your presence when you step mm -hmm. in. Um, you may not always feel that from folks around you, as some of you have already spoken to. It's not every space you walk into where folks make you feel like you belong. Um, but uh, here at One Voice, One Team, we try, you know, we try to show up differently for people, mm. right? So seeing the humanity in people, is, that's what we do. Sometimes, we, sometimes it's so evident, and other times... With folks, based on how they're showing up, we gotta search for that humanity a little bit because we know it's in there. Um, this will be our talking piece for the day. The Youth Leadership Award presented to our guy, Jermaine. Hey. Hey. Miss you, Jermaine. Yeah, yeah. So we're downstairs and we're just talking about this whole atmosphere and this whole um, endeavor of just being for real with it. And this song came to me, literally. And it sounds like this, so it's, it's rough, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, still, it's still fresh, but it sounds like, in my head, It's a place to belong It's a place where you're safe to be You're part of the family One voice, one team mm -hmm. It's a place to belong Yeah it's a place where you're safe to be. You're part of the family. One voice, one team. That's mm. our jingle right there. Mm. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Mm. Two claps. Yeah, Two. Right. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah. Big time. So when we when you think about um, belonging, right? Before we even jump in, right? I know that you, you're well acquainted with one another, but for the purpose of this time together, I'm just going to invite you to just say your name and how you are checking in, please, and thank you. Hey, guys. My name is Mahak. Um, I'm checking in at a 10 out of 10. Hey, guys. <laughs> you know, today's been a lovely day. Checking in at a 10. You know? mm. Awesome. My name is Orlando. I am also checking in at a 10. I mean, what else can I check in at? My name is Melissa, and I'm checking in at a 10. My name is Matt, uh, and y'all already know I'm a 10 all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My name is Kaden, and I'm checking in at a 10. <laughs> I'm checking in at a 10 as well. Hi, guys. My name's Erin. Um, I'm checking in at a 10. Last but definitely not least, mm -hmm. my name is Joe, and I'm checking in at a 10 as well. Awesome. Two claps. Awesome. So, you know, you, you heard Sherry um, kind of welcome us into the space with a song connected to belonging, right? It's a place where you belong. Um, by show of hands, who feels that when they're here? Okay, cool. Uh, so what I'm going to invite um, you, you to share is, what, was there one moment or one event or one activity that you did where you're like, 
I belong. Here at One Voice, One Team. Okay, day one, the first day that I walked in, um, we came in and it was a barbecue that we were doing and like a, a flash mob in downtown Brampton. We were doing the Keep It Shuffle. So like I walk in, I'm an awkward person when I walk into new spaces. So like day one, I was like, mm, there's like 20, 25 people here. I don't know them, they're all older than me. But as soon as I walked in, like everyone said, hey, we did the breakdown, did our thing. And then from then it was like, I left knowing like 10 of those people already on a much closer level. So. Day one, I knew I belonged here because it, like, I get nervous in new environments, and when I left, I wasn't nervous at all to ever come back. Mm -hmm. So that's me. Solid, solid. You give the hacks two claps. <laughs> um, for me, it was definitely during training camp. Uh, it was just one day we were playing Mafia. The first time, actually. <laughs> we actually only played it twice because it takes that long. But it was, once, I, once we played that game, I was really like, wow. We were arguing for so long for something that's so simple. <laughs> but it's like to argue with people that like you enjoy and just, it's just like at the end of the day you just know like you're all family. Like that's mm -hmm. when it really became like, oh, we're it's one voice, one team together, you know? Through thick mm -hmm. and thin. So I was like that day was a game changer for me. Right. Ooh, claps. Uh for me. Um, I guess it's kind of strange. Me, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as the founder, you know, <laughs> when, I when, I of it started. <laughs> when I thought of it. Yeah. So, so there was a point where, um, you know, many of you know my journey, my story in terms of, uh, you know, my football career ending um, due to assault. And uh, there was a time where I was on the pavement during the assault, where um, what came to mind was. Uh, the possibility of being in a space with amazing, talented young people that I had the gift of being able to learn from and pour into. And I, I honestly feel like there, that moment in time just shifted my perspective in that I have to make it through this. Um, dreaming of a day where this might be possible. Right, so to me that that's a moment in time where I'm like, yeah, there was no other option but to get through so that we could do something um, that contributes to the greater good for, with, and through young people. Two claps. I don't know how I'm gonna follow that, <laughs> but I know that I'm actually a very shy person, so coming into this space was kind of difficult. But at first, um, I think it was this one moment we had downstairs at the office and I had a very rough week and we were just chopping it up. It was a simple conversation, literally just starting with a check-in and it turned into us talking about like our family history and like stuff we struggle with and all of this. And I was like, wow, like this is it. Like, and I felt that I could talk in the open and you know when you share something with someone and you instantly regret it? Mm -hmm. I didn't regret it. So I was like, these are my yeah. people. Two claps. Um, for me, I would probably say that it was the first summer that I worked here in 2018. Um, I wasn't sure. I knew I wanted to work with kids, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be good at it or anything like that or, or how it would be. Um, and, you know, you could go to any summer camp and work, but coming to Soul Camp and just seeing the way that we ran things um, with reflection, getting to actually have meaningful conversations with kids. Uh, one of the first things you said uh, to us in training that year was lunch break is not a lunch break for y'all. Uh, you're expected to go and sit with the kids and talk to them. You know what I mean? And that's probably one thing I missed the most about mm -hmm. summer camp is just the, that free time where I get to just hang out with the kids and actually get to know them and talk to them. Um, but then that last day of that camp, we were talking about crying uh, downstairs earlier before we got here and like men and crying and things like that. And just... Seeing, like, Jermaine and Keandre, myself, like, just all the guys involved and everyone at camp just getting emotional on that last day of camp. Uh, and we even had a camper who was, you know, all tough and not, not about that. Um, and on that last day, this, this, this kid needed to, like, be carried to his car because he was so emotional about the fact that, like, it was done. Like, mm -hmm. camp was over. And just seeing his journey and all of our journeys that summer, uh, when I left, I was just like, yeah. There, there's no scenario where I'm not spending my summer with this organization, whether it's camp, whether it's whatever we're doing, like, I need to be with y'all because 
that'll make me feel like I can level up, like I can do something more with my life. And I know you make every person that passes through here feel that way. So there's something I had to be a part of. Two <laughs> Realistically, in grade six, I realized that I was like I wanted to be a part of Soul, the Soul family, but like. I'm gonna run it back to this year when I was actually like in the office doing things. Cause grade six, I was like, oh, I was a camper. Mm. Now I'm a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> He's I have to figure out myself, but yeah. But um, it was kind of like I think it was the same day Melissa was talking about when we were. It was a little group of us downstairs in the office, and we we're just talking about like family issues, I guess, and like our true like emotions. And like me personally, I don't express my emotions like that. So for me to even speak about it, it was like a different thing for me. And like Melissa was saying, if I do express it, I was like, yo, I should have never done that, like a regret thing. And I never regretted it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, a, like I said, it's an open space. So that's when I realized like, this is my, my fan. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Two claps. Uh, for me personally, oh, my name's Aaron, by the way. <laughs> um, and uh, like there are two moments specifically that stuck out to me, like specifically during training, um, like when we were introduced to the, like the reflection piece of Soul Camp, you know, I had a conversation like with McFesty actually um, about like mental health and stuff because that's something I'm super passionate about. I bring it up in camp all the time. Um, and just like the openness that was there. And I've had like conversations with several other like Soul Camp counselors and it's just been amazing. And it's just always been a free space for me to like open up and talk about like my anxieties and stuff like that. And like there was a time where in reflection, I'm like, oh yeah, the counselors are probably sick of hearing me talk about it. And McFessy's like, no, 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 no. Like we're never sick of hearing you talk about it. And another thing is that um, one day I was just having a terrible day. <laughs> like I was worried about my job performance. I was worrying I wasn't like being good enough. And like at the end of camp, it looked like I was about to cry. And I messaged Matt, I'm like, hey, sorry if it looked like I was about to cry, da da da. And like he mentioned, I don't even think I've told you about this. Like when he mentioned, like, I can't wait to see your confidence grow. Like that kind of motivated me to grow my confidence in being a counselor. And I feel like over these past few weeks, that's definitely been something that has been happening. So I'm forever grateful to One Voice, One Team for that. Can we give it two? Two <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what you're going to say. So um, for me, it was because you guys know Jolene can't dance. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So well it was there. like, <laughs> so to get me comfortable enough to show my foolishness in dancing, <laughs> like it was, and everyone's like, Jolene, you can't dance. And like, I know it was like lighthearted. I don't know, it felt like I was part of the a family because I was comfortable enough to show you guys my flaw that like that's one huge thing I'm insecure about if there's music I'm not getting up to dance mm. <laughs> so for me to like get up and actually try I feel like that was like a moment I was like yeah these people are gonna be in my life forever and they're Boy, like forever and <laughs> that you guys are just my family I'm gonna cry <laughs> <laughs> and yeah that was just the simplest thing but that was it two claps why am I getting emotional? <laughs> That's like question one, y'all. <laughs> I know. Hey, listen, I'm just, I'm so grateful. Um, there's not a lot of spaces where I feel like people can be like just real, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I've been in a lot of spaces and people get up and they start sharing. And in my mind, I'm just like, just forget the performance. Just talk to us like we're people, you know? Just be you, right? And, and, and I, I, you know, a thought I have is that not everyone's been exposed to a space where that's welcomed mm -hmm. or celebrated, mm -hmm. right? So if you had to choose, um, if you had three options, three words that you could use to describe uh, the space um, at One Voice, One Team, um, or actually, instead of saying three, because I was going to give you three <laughs> and say choose between these three, but I think um, I'm going to ask you to choose one word to describe the space and say why. One word to describe the space and then your reason why you've chosen that word. Is that a hand going up? Oh. I'm ready. But okay. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Here and then. okay, so for me, I know we were talking about it already, but I definitely say open. Um, I feel like the conversations I've had here, although we can get a little riled up when we can't be talking over each other like just, we just, just were downstairs, bit. Just a bit. Um, we always just 
it's always an opportunity for everyone to express how they feel about something. And whether we disagree or we have a different viewpoint, like we can always respect each other's opinions and we'll come back and be like, hey, like we had that conversation and although we thought differently, like it didn't change that me and you are together in this, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two claps. <laughs> um, growth is probably the word I would use. And my reasoning for that is, um, Again, like every summer I've come here, it's been this my fourth summer now, it's growth. Like I leave feeling like I can do whatever I want to do with my life. Like I leave feeling like there's no challenge that's beyond my comprehension or my ability to overcome it. Um, and I know that uh, all of the feedback I've ever heard from people that have come through here, uh, the campers, their parents, everything, um, it's growth. Like they're just, you guys are always about getting better um, and challenging people and I think that's another thing like we talk a lot about safe spaces and we do a good job creating safe spaces for people but we're also not going to let you just sit in your safe space we're going to challenge you a little bit because we don't want you to just be comfortable we don't want you to just feel safe we want you to grow we want you to recognize your potential and, and realize that where you think you can get to in life is probably nowhere near where you can actually get and that's something that I've definitely felt here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two claps <laughs> um, for me, even as part of school, I'm probably going to go with leadership or leaders, I guess. Um, this is only because every time I attended school camp, I went as a camper, it was twice. Um, I went back because of the leaders that were in my life during the camping. And um, that's really it. Like the things that the, the counselors are doing, I'm not going to say names, but like they're just like really. At that point in my time, in my life, not my time, in my life, I wasn't like really like in the right group of friends, I guess you could say. And like the, the way like the, the counselors were talking to me, like they didn't know what was going on, but they were just talking to me like as if they already knew. I was like, wait though, like you're watching me on the sidelines? Well like no, they were talking to me on a different type of thing. I was just like, wait, like this is like inspirational. Then I got the opportunity to go to Muskoka camp, which made me realize that like I was actually like following the leadership attributes as well. So like and now that I'm here, even though I'm the youngest here, um I was told that I'm a leader as well, which I didn't really like take in, I guess, because I'm young, you know? <laughs> but like, I guess I'm a young, I'm a leader to the campers, but like, there's a lot of people that say, well, everybody here is a leader to me as well. And that's really it, so leadership for me is a word. But I feel like there's much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Two claps. <laughs> All right. Um, for me, my one word is definitely safe, because definitely, like, you know, we want to push kids to grow, we want to get them outside of their safe zone. Um, but in order to get past that, you need to have a safe ground to begin with. So that's why like in reflections and stuff, like I'm always telling kids like, this is a safe space, this is a safe place, this is a safe space. And we've had campers like move us all in tears. Like I swear there was onions in the call or something. Um, and I just feel like it's so important to make kids feel like they are in a safe place to share because we don't know what they got going on at home. We really don't. And it's, so important that they're able to share that with us because we never know again what that's going to do for them can we give it two claps um my one word would be warm it's just coming here i i literally will look for any excuse to come to the office yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if i'm if i have to come i'm so excited like i'm hyped mm -hmm. I, I can really sleep the night before um and just the environment, the people, you know you feel welcome. You like it's like you're getting a hug from all the good energy and the vibes, you know? Uh an example like of that warrant would be the first time I, I did the breakdown, I was like nervous. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Matt, why are you making me do this? <laughs> <laughs> and after I was done and I, I, I immediately private message I'm like, okay, what did I do wrong? Like what can I work on it? And Matt was like he was hyping me up. He was like, you did amazing. You did good. Like, your energy, everything was fine. And I was like, okay, hey, thank you. And then he, he also told me what to work on. But he did it in such a way that it didn't even feel like criticism, you know? Mm -hmm. It was just, the warmth is beautiful. The way you feel <laughs> when you're surrounded, even if it's the whole group or just a few people, it's just, like, you feel like you're getting a hug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Who's cutting onions on the table? <laughs> Can we give her two claps? Um, the word that I would use would be important. Um, I think this. I think important just kind of encompasses a lot of what we do here. 
this is an important space because of how safe it is, of how open it is, of how warm it is. It's a place where we have important conversations and we we will drop everything to finish an important conversation. We got two hours left to camp. Yeah. Like we, we're sitting here with an agenda, like seven more things to get through. We just drop everything to finish that one important conversation. And I think the fact that we do that itself is important. And one thing that I've said before that we've all kind of said before that I will say again is that there isn't a single person that wouldn't benefit from this space. Mm-hmm. There's never a time in my life I won't benefit benefit from this space. So I, I feel mm-hmm. because it's it's that like strong and impactful, I feel that it's it's just important. Mm-hmm. So you have pack two claps. Uh, for me, my word would probably be inspirational. And I'll say the reason why is truly because like I've worked at other summer camps before. I won't th- throw out the names, but you know, <laughs> I've worked at other summer camps and it's never been like this. And due to the fact that we really have to like do this online, at first I was like, what? Like, how, how, you, how do you do camp online? It was like, it was just, it didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. The other ones I did was in person, of course. So for this online camp to be like a thousand times better than the ones I've done in person because the ones in person like it wasn't the way we are teaching these kids like it's we really want the best for them you know like with the school principles like I'm it's just beautiful to me when I see like like Emmy like I actually know Emmy so when her parents are telling me how excited she is to come to camp and whatnot and like how that's all she's been talking about like that just warms my heart you know like it just warms my heart you know like that that's just like it's, it's an inspirational, you know, she's saying that she wants to become a teacher to do this for other kids. I was like, oh, for real? Oh, I was gosh. like, those little things, I was like, oh, for real? I, I was like, man, she's, such, she's such a vibrant kid, you know? So it's like, <laughs> giving those experiences, like, you can't, you can't take those back, you know? Those, like, those are, pr- they're priceless. Could I get two snaps? Listen, <laughs> oh, uh, um, hearing you guys share is like, <laughs> It's so powerful, you know. Um, and again, I don't like for for Emmy and for others. Remember, for every story that you hear of a young person sharing, there's probably four young people walking away, mm-hmm. right? Thinking, yo, how did they know? <laughs> <laughs> right? How did they see me? They actually, they actually care. Mm-hmm. Some don't have the words for it right now. Mm-hmm. Some don't have the relationship with their parents to share that right now. So the fact that you get that feedback is a gift. Well, I want to mm-hmm. encourage you to continue to pour out because more often than not, we won't get that feedback. And we don't do it in order to receive that feedback. We do it because the young people that we serve are gifts themselves and they have gifts to give. Some of them just don't realize that yet until they hear you. Mm-hmm. Feel me? until you have that interaction with them and pour into them, you're having a conversation about the breakdown, like you are amazing, you're awesome. Meanwhile, folks are on the other line nervous as heck, <laughs> right? So, so, you know, I, it's just, it's really special to be in a space where folks are willing to be selfless in order to serve. It's not the norm. So I appreciate you guys being abnormal. In that sense. Um, when you think about I've heard words open and growth and leadership safe and warm and important and inspirational um, why is it important for young people to be in spaces where they could feel that with everything that's happening right now why is it important for a young person to feel what you said is the one word that describes one voice one team why is that important right now so I know for my word, um, I said open, and not even in regards to the pandemic and everything that has been going on, because obviously we've been isolated, we've been trapped with our thoughts and our families, who we love, of course, but sometimes being trapped with someone for too long can really make you start to wonder. Um, <laughs> but I definitely say that a lot of the young people, especially me, coming into a space like this, amidst the pandemic, amidst everything going on in my life, it's just important to have these safe zones and open zones where you can just come and be who you need to be. You can be authentic, you can be genuine, and you're not gonna get like penalized for being who you need to be in that space. Um, another thing I definitely say is with the society that we live in, whether it's like a young man and the intergenerational trauma that happens with young men, like having an open space where you can talk about, as a young man, emotions and things like that, that's so important because you don't want 
those emotions to be silenced. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you're in a space that constantly silences your emotions, then I mean, you just get so accustomed to never sharing them mm -hmm. to the point where you need that open space and you never get it. Mm -hmm. So I think having um, our camp and being able to talk about literally anything with these campers and with one another, it's truly beneficial. Mm -hmm. Two claps. Um, so my word I chose growth, but hearing everyone else's words, um, I would also agree with all of them. Uh, but I think that the main reason why young people need to be in a space like this is because simply put there are spaces like this out there mm -hmm. um, like ultimately when you think about the spaces that kids spend most of their time in, um, it's a classroom right or maybe it's with a group of friends or it's their home maybe it's a sports team or a club or a hobby like that um, but for the most part uh, they're surrounded by people who they spend a lot of time with right uh, you know, you talk about your classmates, you're spending all year with them in the same room, in the same space with them. Uh, and even in a pandemic, whatever, you're going to have the same situations where there are going to be people in the classroom that you do feel comfortable sharing around and there are going to be folks in the classroom you don't feel comfortable sharing around. Um, and that's life. That's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, same thing with sports or with, you know, clubs or groups of people that you're hanging out with. Uh, there are going to be some folks that you do feel comfortable being around and then others that you don't. Um, and one common theme with a lot of those things is that the ratio of adult to child in those spaces is usually one to about 10, right? Um, and that one adult is probably pretty stressed and has a lot going on and might not have the time to make it known to kids, like, hey, have these conversations, mm -hmm. right? Um, stand up and talk about how you respect yourself. Talk about how you work hard. Let's talk about how you overcome adversity or lead by example or how you try to show excellence in your life. It's just, it's a hard thing to do when it's, you know, one and a bunch of kids. Um, and the conversations that kids have are fun. You know what I mean? They're, they're trying to have fun. They're trying to joke around, make arguments with each other, laugh, right? And you learn a lot through doing that. Kids learn some of the most valuable lessons just being on their own. It's good to let kids be on their own. Um, but ultimately, when you have a space like we have here where there's a much better ratio between you know, young adults um, and kids, and you have those young adults stepping out of their comfort zones, right? Because let's not kid ourselves. It's uncomfortable for us to step out and talk about things. I've shared things at One Voice, One Team uh, that I haven't even shared with my own family. And I'm very close with my family. Mm -hmm. I have a very good relationship mm -hmm. with my family, but there are still some things that I'm more comfortable sharing with groups of people here. And it's not necessarily that I'm uncomfortable sharing with others, but when someone leads by example and shares something personal to them, um, it inspires you, right? You're like, oh wow, you know what? I've actually been through something very similar to that. Let me share my experience and piggyback off of what they're saying, mm -hmm. right? And then the more young people you have sharing and being in those spaces, um, the more comfortable the even younger people there are sharing with sharing, right? They, they become comfortable sharing their experiences. Uh, they actually learn about their experiences, right? They might not know how to make sense of a, an experience until the older counselor states an experience of theirs. And they're like, oh, you know what? That's actually kind of similar to mine. Maybe I am feeling a similar way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's really important. And one thing you mentioned the other day, Orlando, when we were talking about some things um, and just making camp happen and making things happen is camp is not just an experience for the kids, right? Like these young kids, while they have an incredible experience, uh, it's also an incredible experience for our staff, mm -hmm. for the young people that I look around and see sitting here, right? And I think about the, the places that you're at at your ages, where I was at at that age, right? Um, or where some of my friends were at at those ages and where we would be at today if we had a space like this at that age, right? If we had people in our lives who were just a little bit older than us, but doing their best to lead by example and show us kind of, you know, blueprint and map things out um, and just be open to have those conversations. Uh, and this space has made me much more open having conversations like that with my friends mm -hmm. uh, because I see how we do it, right? Mm -hmm. How do we get people out of their shell? What ways do we kind of appropriately manipulate and use and leverage certain feelings and emotions and, and discussion points uh, to get people to be more comfortable sharing. Um, and when you do that with the people you're around, when you lead by example in that way, um, subtly, right? You're not forcing it down their throat. You're not telling them you always need to share, be emotional with me, right? You're just being honest and authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's powerful and profound how much people will share because ultimately they're begging, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like inside, they're banging on the door trying to get out, mm -hmm. but they don't feel like there's anyone there to listen. Mm -hmm. So we give them the space where we show them we listen, 
we show them that we share and it makes it a lot easier for them to do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for me, like specifically when I think about the SWOL principles, I just really feel like they're the foundation for self-discovery. And if I had been in a SWOL camp when I was like between the ages, I think it's like seven to 13, right? Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have gotten to some of the low points that I had like throughout my teenage years and stuff because, you know, throughout my life, oh man, why am I getting emotional? <laughs> <laughs> like I've really struggled like with my own self-worth, my own confidence, my own anxieties. And like, I've been very open about that, you know, because today, girl, I'd be, I'd be right. confident. Hey, like, come on now, come on now. But <laughs> with the hot girl glasses. Uh, <laughs> It took me a lot to get to this point. And the reason why I talk about it so much is because I'm so proud of it. Mm -hmm. And there was a point in my life throughout high school, you know, you know, I wouldn't be here today if I let myself do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like this camp is so important because I feel like it could serve that purpose for such younger kids before it gets to that point. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, no, I really do value this camp so much and, you know, One Voice, One Team for what it is doing for young people because, you know, what Orlando says, there are lives on the line. There really were. And at one point, I was one of them. Mm -hmm. Can we give it in two? For me, when I think of the word warm, I associate it with like, my voice is because I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing people cry. Um, I associate it with like finding yourself in a situation or environment where you feel comfortable, where you feel safe, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the perfect place because I'm a kid myself and you need that warm place, that safe environment to grow, like Matt was saying, to explore, to find out who you are as a person. And if you feel like you're not in a safe place, in a warm place, like you don't have that opportunity, then that's when things can get a little confusing and things can go a little sideways. But I feel like here, everyone is like, everyone is inviting. Everyone is always there ready to listen, whether you know, whether you're really close with the person or not, everyone is just, like I said, warm, like, come give me a hug. But <laughs> So it's like the perfect place to be vulnerable. Like Kaden was saying, it's even if you're not a vulnerable person, um, to grow like Matt was saying and to be inspired by other people and to just be a better person. And this is like, I said it a thousand times, the perfect place to do that because no matter where you turn and if you feel alone, there's 100% gonna be someone there, 100%. And then you'll find yourself, you're surrounded by, what Kayla said earlier, leading by example, you're surrounded by all these examples of how you should act, how, like, how to be the best, your best self. And you start practicing these principles that we're teaching and it's just spreading positivity everywhere. So for me, um, two things kind of oh, piggybacking off of what Joa just said. Um, you're in a space that's kind of disconnected from like the rest of your life. And I think that that can be very valuable because you have people here that they're, they're not, they, they don't have emotional ties to what you got going on in life. So they're, they're talking very objectively just about like a situation you present to them. And because of that, you get options and options and options on like healthy ways that you can release relieve your pressures or relieve stress healthy ways that you can kind of manage your emotions and like if I go to Joe about one thing she's gonna give me way different advice than Matt and maybe one of their pieces of advice is gonna stick more with me and that'll help me and then I can go take that with me so I think the fact that it's a, a space that isn't found elsewhere and it's also a space where you'll find so many different leaders like we've already said they're all bringing their own perspective and we're all doing it in a manner that is just meant to help a person be better and to just feel better at the end of the day so I think because you have that like disconnect from the rest of your life, it makes it so much easier to then connect back into your own life. And I, that's why I think the space is important. And that was my word too. So you know, ties into the question really well. That's it. Can you give me hack two claps? So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tie in my word and inspiration like that, but you know, for me, um. I'd say like we look at we look around right now like we're all so different you know we all come from different places we're all different ages like I'm 19 still so Matt's 25 like like what's like what what common do we have <laughs> but it's like you know like what stuff in common do we have but it's like we've bonded so much and 
I've learned so much and you know I'm at an age where like you know my prefrontal cortex you know I'm thinking that I'm thinking high up you know <laughs> so I'm thinking like hey, what can someone really teach me yeah. but then like mm-hmm. even today like the way my was talking t- to us about like oh like just not being like confrontational like you know like just let it be like if, you, some, if someone approaches you in an argument and they're yelling just be like okay just hug it like you know like because like there's so much other problems that can happen after and it's like it's not it's like little stuff that like, you already know in your head but then when you think about it like that's that's no, there's no word of a lie in that you know there's no <laughs> cap in his rap like it's really it's, that's why i'm like there's so much stuff that i believe like all these kids can learn from us in different ways mm-hmm. and it's like since we all would think of stuff like in different ways but we all have like the best intentions for that child yeah. regardless of the situation like you always have the best intentions for everyone around us so it's like it's just inspirational because you know you just do that See what you did there? Very well done. The tie-in was brilliant. Two claps. And inspirational. So, um, man, y'all are, I have so much to offer the planet. I'm so I'm just excited. Um, when you think about the type of space, right? And you, who, by show of hands, would say it's different from what your educational experience has been like. Mm-hmm. What? You gotta ask that question. Okay, okay. So, um, what would a teacher need to do in order to create an open space of growth, leadership, safe, warm, important, inspirational type of space? What would a teacher need to do in order to create that space? Um, Teach. So, yeah, so uh, being someone who is going into education myself um, and starting my teaching career um, man it's a it's a tough game you know what I mean uh, again as I was talking earlier right like when you think about um, the spaces that you're in as a teacher for sure right and just having experienced this as well when it's 1 in 25 or 1 in 20 even uh, or 1 in 15 even right uh, you have to uh, it's, it's hard, you have to understand that there are gonna be different dynamics and you can't see everything. Um, and um, I think one of the big things that I find uh, a lot of teachers maybe struggle with in education is the, the pressure to teach the curriculum or the book or the subject. Um, and the, you know, as Mahak actually mentioned earlier, right, we'll, we'll, we'll throw the agenda out if we need to have an important discussion. Mm-hmm. If we need to debrief something, if we need to talk about something. But a lot of teachers that I've seen aren't willing to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, because, uh, and again, maybe in their defense, but also not, you know, you might have a, an issue with five kids and they think that, oh, well, that's their issue, but the other 10 don't need to worry about that. And I think we're missing a lot of the key points in the fact that it's like, if there's an issue with five kids, that's a lesson for the rest of the kids as well, mm-hmm. right? There's a lesson in everything you do. Um, but also just, you know, the... You know, the, the creativity uh, and the passion, I think, is one thing that um, is really important to me. Like, uh, I think you need to love what you do, regardless of whatever you do, right? You need to love it, of course, we know that. But when, you, when, you, when we're talking about working with kids, when we're talking about um, the impact and the meaning that comes with that, um, the, I've, I've heard a lot when I got into teaching, you know, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna save the kid, or you know, it's out of your control. What happens to them is gonna happen to them. And while all of that may be rooted in some kind of fact or experience, um, I just can't believe it, and I refuse to believe it, uh, because I've seen that you can make a difference in one week with a kid. You know what I'm saying? Here, I've seen that in a day, just a conversation with a child, um, and it starts with the relationship. It starts with sitting down in circles like this. It starts with just getting to know the people that are in your space. Um, And as a teacher, if you're not taking the time to sit down and get to know your students, get to know their families, get to know what's happening in their life outside of the classroom, because that's where their life's happening. Their life's not happening in your classroom, if you believe that. You know, that's a different conversation. But ultimately, there are things so much more important that are going on um, and in my experience that will help your teaching beyond measures um, when you know when you can have that quick conversation with a kid 
and just ask how was your weekend and they give you most most kids are going to tell you fine and then look back and do whatever they're doing or go back to their phone you know what i'm saying but when you do it every day yeah you're going to catch them on the one day where things aren't fine and they're they might give you a hint they might not tell you the whole story but they'll tell you a little bit mm -hmm. and then you can start to connect some dots right or they'll tell you when they had a good day and then again, you can connect that down. You can say, oh, okay, when this happens, they're happy. When this, when this happens, they're not happy. Don't, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's how you get to know your students. And when you know your students, I feel like it's a lot easier to help them know each other. So help them establish relationships with one another. Um, and once you have that going, right, once you, once you start, you know, kind of spinning that web and creating and letting kids know, like, hey, you are not so different from this kid. Right, you're also going through the same thing, but you do it creatively so that they're kind of they feel like they're doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Talking about that appropriate manipulation, you you connect the dots for them here and there, um, and that takes time, right? That might take months when you're in a classroom, but eventually you'll you'll end up creating a space where they feel like they're comfortable sharing with their folks, right? They they feel like okay, I'm safe here, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's a challenge, man. It's a real challenge because sometimes kids are going to share things with you that, again, as a teacher, you have a professional responsibility. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things that kids may share that you have to report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once you report, the trust goes away, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be very mindful of that. Um, one strategy that my teacher that I was learning from had me use was writing. Um, and we talked about this downstairs as well, the impact of writing things down. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not for someone, it's not for us to read, it's not for us to go over and look over, but um, it's a way to get them to, you know, outlet their emotions and outlet how they're feeling. And I think just giving kids and giving um, young people the space to do that and do it in a way where they feel safe uh, goes a long way in terms of establishing a solid relationship, which is then going to allow you to teach them in a more effective manner. Two claps. That was crazy stuff. <laughs> um, the first thing that I'm going to say to the teachers is probably change the curriculum. Please. Z zoom in on this, please. Teachers, <laughs> change the curriculum. You guys already know what I'm talking about. Change it up. <laughs> so I'll leave it there. But um, mainly the thing is for me, connection. Um, connection with like building like a relationship with students is the main key for me. Because for real though, like if I'm here and I don't have a connection with these people, I'm not going to enjoy my time at all. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm here right now is because I'm enjoying my time. I'm connecting with everybody. I have a relationship with everybody. Um, and I love the facility here. I love the environment here. School, not so much. I'm there because, um, one, I'm not following um, under the stereotype of a black male who's going to be failing high school. We're not going to be doing that. Um, two, um, I have a passion. I'm passionate about what I'm doing, so I'm going to execute and do that. Also, though, but, um, it's really about connection with students. If you're, like, if you're a teacher and you're just going to work to teach, you're going to work to work and not doing anything like go outside the box of what you really want to do, then what are you like, what are you really doing? Like, are you really passionate about what you're doing? No, you're just doing the bare minimum and that's not okay. Mm -hmm. This is like, you're teaching the future generation, you know? So like, I don't know how to really put it. If you're teaching the future generation, you want that generation to be the best of the best. You ready? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to be teaching when we're older heads, you know? So you're going to be in a retiring home and we're going to be the ones um, debating about if you should get paid or not, or if you can be fed by yourself, you know? like. It's just little things like that. And because I'm not passionate about like, I mean, I'm passionate about everything, but um, the teachers aren't passionate about teaching me. I'm not passionate about being in a classroom. Although I'm still gonna try my best and work my hardest, I'm still not like right there with you. Like yeah. it's different between like, say connecting with the students, like say you're a student right now, and I'm gonna connect with you like this, cause I'm talking like this, you know? Cause this is how you relate to it. Mm -hmm. But if, yes, look Festy, um, how may I help you today? Right. You know, like it's little things, <laughs> no, but for real, those little yeah. things like that, just connecting with students in a different manner is the way that you can get me or other students in general just to like, I don't know, enhance their performance, I guess you could see. And then I'm going to end it again, change the curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let me, let me just give you this award really quickly. Um, can we give Caden two claps? You know, I think it's really hard to... Um, top both of those. So I'm just going to give an example. Um, in grade nine, I had a science teacher and the first thing he said to us was, you know, 
I want you guys to know I'm not your friend. I'm your teacher. Literally. You know, and he would say things like, okay, if I ever see you with headphones in your ear, I'm going to come up with scissors and I'm going to cut them off. You know, just things like that. And he was, t I was terrified of him, you know. And guess what? I got a 51 in that class because I felt like I could never go to him with my, like, struggles and stuff. Because science and math, not going to lie. Not good at them. No. <laughs> it's not my thing. And I never really had a teacher that made it interesting for me. Now, I'm going to compare that to my history teacher. I was never passionate about history. You know, shout out to Mr. Cornish from Central Peel Secondary School. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. He really just opened my eyes to so many things. And also, he taught me a lot about what it means to be an ally, right? And he would talk about real world things, present day issues, which I feel like is missing so much from this curriculum. Because you're telling me that schools are not teaching about Black Lives Matter? You're telling me about how schools don't talk about Pride Month. You're telling me that schools don't talk about, you know, what's going on overseas. But yet we can talk about World War One, World War Two until it's done. Let's talk about it. <laughs> right. Like let's, talk let's about it. <laughs> because my thing is the problem with our schools. You know, I go to um, Brock University. You know, it's a very white predominant school, um, and I'm having like my friends come up to me and like the first time they're hearing about Black Lives Matter, any like type of movements is when they come to university, there is a problem with that, yeah. you know? And also this idea of not wanting to be your student's friend. How do you think they're gonna come to you with issues if they can't trust you? You know, Mr. Cornish was the kind of teacher when I came in in grade 12 after I was finished his class, he's like, hey guys, this is my daughter. I was, obviously I'm not his daughter. <laughs> but he treated me, like, I feel like I'm family. I have him on Facebook, he treats me like I'm a person and you know what, with students you have to do that, you know, and th the reason why people are so ignorant to world issues today, the, the reason why people don't know about them, it's because we're not talking about it. You think to eliminate racism we shouldn't talk about it? No, that's going to make people ignorant. The way we're going to eliminate it, the way we're going to get to a post-racial society is if we talk about it. One body. We need to talk about it. Like. I feel like people just think, oh, I don't see color. It's like, no, you mm -hmm. need to see Definitely. that it's not just a past issue. It's presently happening. We learn about Black History Month, but we don't talk about how black history is still happening today. Right. You know, and a lot of times, you know, I hope that I'm not speaking over like black voices or anything. White people need to learn to uplift black voices as well. And they're not learning that, you know. So the first time that they get an education in university, they tend to talk over black voices, which should not be the issue. They're talking about how, oh, critical race theory, you know, it's, you know, kids are too young. You know what, if kids are, sorry, if they're old enough to experience racism from the age of kindergarten, getting talks about police brutality in kindergarten, Ooh. you want to eliminate racism, teach kids about it. In this essay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Stay tuned for part two of For Real Fridays, where you'll hear the brilliance, wisdom, and insights of young people who know what's good.